Hi, welcome to the wonderful world of daylilies. I'm Nikki Smith, Chair of Judges Education and Certified Judges Instructor for the American Hemerocallus Society. This video is part one in a three-part series. I encourage you to enjoy all three videos to get the whole picture of what being an accredited exhibition judge entails. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we'll explore the responsibilities, requirements, and ethics of daily exhibition judging. The material covered in these videos mirror that presented during the classroom training which is offered by the AHS at national, regional, and local club events. Now, whether you are a newcomer to more detailed adventures with daylilies, or maybe you are already a seasoned exhibition judge, these videos are meant to inspire and educate everyone interested in studying daylilies at a deeper level. Please use the email address you see on the screen to send any questions, comments, or concerns you might have regarding these videos or the judging process. There are prerequisites to this course in order to receive official credit for taking it. First, in order to receive official credit for this course, you must have maintained membership in the AHS for two years. You can visit www.daylilies.org for more information about joining this vibrant and fun society. Of course, you also should have a keen interest in daylilies and a desire to patiently study them deeper than the casual observer. You should also be growing a representative sample of daylilies in your own garden or have access to a variety of daylily gardens in your area. The AHS website has a list of official display gardens that are open to the public if you're interested in visiting them and learning more. And last, the AHS publishes a judging handbook for exhibitions. This book contains the history of shows, judging, and wonderful information on how to judge and how to organize your own daily show. It can be downloaded for free as a PDF from the AHS website, and you see a screenshot of that website here. Notice the red arrow highlights the Judges Exhibition link there on the left. If you click on that link, you can learn more and download the handbook. Now, in this particular video, what we're going to cover are the responsibilities and requirements of an exhibition judge, and we're also going to go over ethics of judging. Those are the first two topics that are covered during the first portion of the classroom training, so that's what we're going to cover here as well. Looking forward next in the series, video two, we will concentrate on judging standards, organization, rules, and accreditation. That is the ins and outs of being a judge, how to organize your, your knowledge, how to follow the rules of the handbook and make sure that you're maintaining the integrity of shows. We also go into detail about explaining the different levels of being an accredited judge. And then in video three, we're going to talk about the characteristics of daylilies. We'll be familiarizing you with common terminology that's used so that we can all be on the same page when we're sharing a panel at exhibition shows. So let's cover the first topic for this video, responsibilities and requirements of an exhibition judge. The first and foremost responsibility of an AHS exhibition judge is to enhance and represent the image of the American Hemericalis Society and the integrity of the show process in all possible ways. And I have those first two words highlighted there, enhance represent. That is your paramount goal as a judge, not to criticize the local show, not to impart on them your feelings about exhibition shows, but to think of yourself as an ambassador for AHS and helping these shows grow and succeed. It is also the responsibility of an exhibition judge to know, grow, and show typical cultivars, new and old from all sizes, forms, subforms, colors, and patterns. 
It's important that judges know, grow, and show so that they stay in touch with the show process, with new developments in daily culture, with new directions in show procedures. And so we need for judges to stay as close to the pulse of daily culture, that knowing, growing, and showing as possible. It's also very important that judges continue their education. A judge's knowledge is never complete. You do not read the handbook, sit through this class once or twice in some cases, and then consider your book closed. This is a growing process. It changes over time. New forms, new directions, new colors, new patterns, new procedures, new habits. All of those new developments require Require judges to continue their education, attend refresher clinics as often as possible, go to as many shows as possible, even if you are not invited as a judge, exhibit as often as possible. Again, just so you can keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in today's daily world. A few more responsibilities and requirements. It is our responsibility to promote daylilies and encourage youth. You notice so far, I have given you four bullet points so far already, and all of these have been positive items that you should do in order to grow the daylily community. Our responsibilities do not include things like to judge to the strictest standard to the letter of the book, to educate exhibitors on how to correctly groom in a show. Those things come as part of being involved with exhibitors and involved with the show. We have to step back a little bit and look at what our broader responsibility is. And one of the more important ones is encouraging youth and encouraging new exhibitors to become involved in shows. You should visit as many gardens as possible, and this includes private gardens, display gardens, hybridizer-centric gardens, library gardens, estate gardens, botanical gardens, all different kinds. Again, keeping your finger on the modern pulse of what's going on in our community. We need judges to study advancements in breeding and culture. Uh, for example, most recently, AHS has recognized the sculpted form as an official daylily form. There are several subforms in that recognized form, and without time to concentrate on what those intricacies are, a judge could really do a disservice to an exhibitor who's bringing in one of those sculpted form daylilies to the show. A judge who doesn't understand that this is a new direction in daylilies, and I certainly by saying this am not making a judgment one way or another, I'm simply saying by not understanding what direction is trying to be attained by the sculpted form, a judge could make comments, could make decisions that are detrimental to the new development of forms in AHS. So we need for you to study those advancements, and that comes, you know, as a benefit of visiting hybridizer gardens, as a benefit of visiting display gardens. You're seeing what's going on in these hybridizer fields. You're listening to what types of directions they're following. You're a part of active Facebook groups. You're a part of the email Robin. You are attending exhibition refresher clinics and listening to what's going on in our community today. Improving your own judging skills comes naturally by being involved in those things, continuing your education, we cannot stress that enough, and sharing that skill and that experience with new judges and with the public, not just in your own small circle. Going to those refresher clinics at national and regional meetings, those are some very important conversations to be understanding of what's going on in other regions, to listen to the hot topics that other judging panels come across, to listen to what new procedures might be used during a master panel. Your education, your skill, your experience, again, is a continual growing process. So we consider that both a responsibility and a requirement of AHS exhibition judges to continue and share that education. Thank you. 
Now that we are all on the same page of what our responsibilities and requirements are in being an exhibition judge, I want to share with you some very important points around ethics in exhibition judging. And I can tell you after a decade of being a senior exhibition judge myself and listening to the stories of other exhibition judges who have been in this arena for, in some cases, 40 years of judging exhibition shows, these points are the most debated, the most forgotten, Gotten, and yet the most important. So I'd implore you to just pay attention, look at the finer points of what we're trying to relay in these in this ethics overview, and uh, listen to it again. You can always come back to this point in the video and look at it again if necessary. First, it is important that judges do not solicit judging invitations for themselves. We do not want you to put show chairman or judges chairman in a uncomfortable position by you offering your service as a judge and uh, put them in the position of having to tell you no for whatever reason. So uh, on behalf of AHS, we are asking that you do not solicit judging invitations for yourself. If you are having trouble finding judging assignments, each region has a regional exhibitions judges liaison. And if that person is not helping you find judging assignments, you have your regional president. And on top of that, we also have a judge's education chair through the AHS. And we also have a bulletin board on the AHS members portal where judges can just simply post on a bulletin board to say that they're looking for judging assignments. Speaking of accepting judging assignments, you should accept all invitations when you are able and you should respond promptly. Even if you are unable to fulfill a request for your judging services, you should do so promptly so that judging chairs and show chairs can move in other directions to get their panels lined up. Uh, we would expect that all exhibitions judges, if they are able, would accept all invitations that they are extended. It's a privilege to be invited, and you have gone through the training to become accredited to help these shows be successful, so please accept them when able and and respond promptly. You should only judge accredited shows. If there are four display only shows in your area, and I know many clubs are having, they're getting their feet wet in the show arena by having off scape shows or just having uh, display only scape shows. AHS judges are directly forbidden from judging unaccredited shows, period. I don't think that there is any room for interpretation there. A show is either accredited by AHS or it is not. And if you are an AHS accredited judge, you are not allowed to offer your judging expertise to those unaccredited events. Any questions on whether the show is accredited or not, you should always contact the exhibitions chair or the judge's education chair for any clarification on that process. You are trained to judge AHS accredited shows that follow a specific set of standards and employ a specific scale of points, and your training is not relevant in any other area. So please only judge AHS accredited shows. You should not expect reimbursement if you are able to go and judge a show. It is not common uh, for shows to not have the funding to pay full travel expenses and a stipend for judges. Um, you should not uh, be in the practice of, well, yes, I'll accept your invitation, but I cost $350 plus travel to come and do that. That is not acceptable. Judges are in short supply in many regions. AHS is trying to change the trend of declining shows 
And so we expect that judges, when possible, will accept the invitations and will accept them with no reimbursement tied if that is what the show can afford or not afford to pay you. You should be prepared prior to each show. And by being prepared, I mean you should have reviewed the show schedule that you are provided. You should have reviewed the best in show balloting procedure. You should have reviewed the Ophelia Taylor scoring, the achievement medal scoring, any thing else you might want to just skim through the judging handbook. You might want to look online in the forums on our members portal to see if there are any hot topic discussions going on. But we are just asking that you're prepared prior to each show to judge any section, which means that you will not show up to an event at which you are a judge and say, oh, well, I really prefer to not judge the seedlings. I'm not really very good at judging seedlings. Can I switch panels? That's poor form for you to ask them to move you because of your personal preference. So please be prepared to judge any and all sections of an accredited show when you are showing up as a judge on a panel at that show. You should follow that show schedule and any other show official instructions unless they conflict directly with AHS rules. It is not your place to correct a show chair with, quote, a better way to do something or a faster way to do something or an in-your-experience way of doing something. The show chair and the show committee have the authority to run their show however they'd like to do it as long as it falls within the guidelines of the AHS rules. And as you know, there are lots of room for interpretation of those rules. So you should be very tactful and refrain from commenting unless their operation is directly conflicting with published AHS rules. If you find that that's the case, you should tactfully and privately Discuss those issues with the show chairman if you discover that there's a conflict between the show schedule, the show procedures, something that's happening on show day, and the published AHS rules. Please be tactful and please be private with your comments for a show chair. We're all very sensitive to what a big job it is to be a show chairman. And having a judge show up on show day to tell them about how differently they could have done everything, if only, is very frustrating and it's also very disheartening. So please remain tactful and simply follow the rules that you are given unless they directly conflict with published AHS rules. Just a few more points on ethics. This is page two of four. When you are judging on a panel and you approach a particular cultivar that is there on display for you to judge, if you do not recognize that particular cultivar, you should tell others on the panel and you should look to them for assistance. Um, Quite often, um, judges might make determinations on what they have seen on the internet or what they might have seen in catalogs. If you are not familiar with particular characteristics of a cultivar, you, you should defer to the rest of the panel. And if no one on the panel is familiar with the particular cultivar that is in front of you for judging, then you should simply use the scale of points that you are given to judge the flower. You could ask the classification chair to redo the description as the registrant has provided it during the registration process, and you should judge based on those qualities. Assumptions are not effective on the judging table. You should be tactful and respectful of others. You should allow others on the panel to express their opinions. You should do so efficiently and keep the panel moving. But if you disagree with the way that a fellow judge is evaluating flowers, being tactful, directing them to the scale of points in the show schedule to keep you on track, directing them to a particular passage in the judging handbook, um, there have have been reports of of way too many personal debates or personality conflicts um, among judges or among judges and clerks or judges and show chairs. 
really the the ethics of it all is that we should be tactful and respectful of others as humans, let alone as judges. So remember that when you are a member of the panel. You should also be fair, honest, impartial, and avoid pettiness. Uh, there are four words in there, and they are all very important. But being honest, uh, it, it might come into play if you happen to have seen who brought in a particular display for the show on a day. It would be honest of you to say, I'm going to step back while the rest of you judge this particular exhibit. You don't have to go into details, but recusing yourself from judging a particular display on the show table is good and it's acceptable. Being impartial, uh, if you happen to really, really like doubles, uh, there is no need for you to bubble over about your excitement about doubles and about how much you like doubles and how many doubles you grow in your garden and how many beautiful doubles you've seen on tour this year and how more daylilies should be double. You should be impartial. Every daylily you see on the show bench should be judged equally and on its own merit. Avoiding pettiness with other judges on your panel, avoiding pettiness with other uh, volunteers at the show, avoiding pettiness with the public who has come to view the show. Uh, you have to remember that most of the people who are visiting your shows are new. They don't understand the protocol. They don't understand the depth at which you have been trained to be a judge. So avoiding little frustrations and chastising and um, being rude to visitors or volunteers is definitely discouraged. And that's a point of ethics for judges to maintain that fair, honest, and impartial tone throughout the entire judging process. You should behave with dignity, just as to dovetail on the last point. If you do have an issue, you should speak directly with others, and it's always good practice to simply redirect them using the judging handbook, using the show schedule, using known rules, um, speaking directly with them and not gossiping, not yelling, not chastising. Um, it, it kind of all goes back to being tactful and respectful. With being tactful and respectful come other behaviors that inherently happen. And we hope that all judges will maintain those standards. If you do have experiences with judges on panels who are not tactful, honest, fair, uh, respectful, they're not behaving with dignity. A, a simply worded email or a written letter to the exhibitions chair or the judge's education chair with specific examples and names of the occurrence. Um, certainly those um, reports will be kept confidential and will be treated with very, very sensitive hands. But if we don't know what's going on out in the field, there is not a way that we can redirect those behaviors. So speak directly with others about your concerns as they relate to the published rules for AHS shows. The panel chairman, each panel of three judges is appointed a panel chairman. And they are appointed by the show chair to keep things moving. They assure that awards are placed correctly. They call the clerks and the classification chair when necessary. A panel chair does not dominate. A panel chair's voice is not the only one heard throughout the judging experience on a particular day. The panel chair is simply the voice that needs to keep the panel on task and makes sure that all of the AHS published rules are followed. Judges should always endeavor to withhold prejudices. And back to my discussion just a moment ago about doubles. Uh, if you happen to be on the other side of that and you absolutely abhor doubles, you cannot stand the sight of them. That's also something that I should not know. 
I should not hear during a judging panel that you don't like midribs. I should not hear during a judging panel that, oh, I don't really like brown daylilies. Why are they, why do we have brown daylilies? I shouldn't hear about how much you hate unusual forms or how much you think spiders are a waste of time or how much you think that minis don't do anything in the garden. Those are prejudices. I also shouldn't hear about how much you do not like a particular direction that a particular hybridizer is going in. We shouldn't hear, oh, well, that Tom Thumb, boy, he is just a mess. The cu Every cultivar that he introduces just doesn't open correctly. I just don't understand why he continues to blah, blah, blah. Those kinds of conversations are not to be happening during the judging. The conversations that you're having during judging relate to the scale of points, they relate to your standards, and they relate to the show schedule. They don't relate to anything else. Your personal experience growing a cultivar by a particular hybridizer does not belong at the show during judging. Your experience growing miniature doubles in Arkansas does not belong in a conversation during judging. Your feelings about yellow daylilies with teeth on the petals do not belong. Those are your personal opinions. Personal opinions translate to personal prejudices. And those kinds of conversations, while they can occur after judging, they are not to occur during the judging process. Let me let you in on a little bit secret. Your clerks are listening very carefully to everything that you're saying. And everything that you're saying is probably going to be repeated more than once. And when it is repeated, it's not going to be as you said it. There are show volunteers that are listening to what you're saying. There are other judges who are listening to what you are saying. And you should remember that when those words are replayed, they are not going to be replayed with the same intent and purpose as they were when they first came out of your face. So you should try to withhold those prejudices and remember being tactful and respectful of others. And by others, I mean exhibitors, hybridizers, volunteers, guests, every person that comes to touch the show. Those are the people we should be tactful and respectful of. Withholding your personal prejudices is paramount to the process of a true show. As far as the mechanics go, you should never touch a specimen as well. You should not, oh, look right here. You see this tear in the petal? Look, you shouldn't take the point of your ballpoint pen and lift up a, a sepal so that you can see some damage on the skate below. You should not reach out and touch the vase and spin it around so that the rest of the panel can see the back. There is absolutely not one single solitary instance that would allow a judge to touch an exhibit during the judging process. If that pedal accidentally breaks while you're touching it, you have just sabotaged someone's exhibit. And no matter how good your intentions and no ma matter how directly an accident it might have been, you should remove yourself from any chance of having any accident by touching any exhibit for any reason. That point cannot be more clear. Do not touch the exhibits with your hands, with your face, with your pen, with your paper, with your pointer, with a chopstick, with a grooming stick, with a pair of scissors, with nothing. Do not touch an exhibit. Ask your clerk to move it. Ask your clerk to twist it. Ask your clerk to do anything that you would do, but a judge's hands should never touch any exhibit for any reason. Page three of our ethics. It seems like there's a lot of words here, but that's because there are a lot of points to understand. Number one on this slide, refrain from criticizing the local organization, the show, the officials, or fellow judges. We don't need your personal commentary about how you feel the show was run. You are an invited guest, and you should be, again, tactful and respectful of others. 
If you have negative opinions about how things have been run, about how things were set up, about how you were invited, about how it's organized, about how it's laid out, about how long it's taking, about how dumb the awards are, about how beautiful um, you had it at your show and everybody should do it. That criticism cuts deeper when it comes from an AHS representative. And you should remember the very first point I showed you under responsibilities and requirements in this presentation was to enhance the reputation of AHS at all times. And if you are in the corner criticizing anything, any aspect of a show that you are an invited guest of, that is in very poor form, very poor form. Your authority stops with the sections you have been assigned to judge. Your authority does not extend to how grooming was set up or how classification is set up or how they handed you a mechanical pencil instead of a regular pencil or how the lunch that they served was too light or too heavy or the fact that they had sugary donuts in the morning. Your authority as an invited judge is to judge the sections that you have been assigned to judge. And that's it. You have no other authority over that show or over the show process unless it directly conflicts with published AHS protocol. You should not judge in any class if you have prior knowledge that could bring impartiality into question. Uh, If you happen to recognize someone's handwriting on a tag, if you happen to accidentally see the name and address of the exhibitor on a particular exhibit, if when you were coming in for the judge's briefing on the morning of the show, you saw someone unloading their car and you saw this big, gorgeous, yellow, unusual form and now you're presented with it on the show bench, anything, you should feel comfortable And you have the authority to say the following words. I'm going to step back from judging this exhibit. Period. The other show judges do not. Well, why? Well, why don't you want to judge it? Why aren't you judging this? What what is going on? You have the authority to simply say, I'm going to step back from judging this exhibit. Here's another example. You are a hybridizer. And you have several cultivars that compete in shows. You're also an exhibition judge. You've been invited to judge a show. You come across a section. And the first exhibit in the section is one of your cultivars. I would think that the ethical thing for you to do would be to say, I am going to step back from judging this exhibit. And you simply step back and you let the other two members of your panel continue on with judging that exhibit. Anything that could bring your your, um, integrity into question, you should step back and recuse yourself from judging. You shouldn't judge in any show, period, if you have knowledge that could bring impartiality into question or leave exhibitors with the perception of undue influence or is so pervasive that it renders you unable to participate fully. For example, do not spend the night at someone's home that's going to be exhibiting the next day in a show in which you are a judge. Don't do that. Because other exhibitors might think, oh, well, Tom Thumb spent the night at uh, Jane Jones' house last night. Jane Jones showed up today with 44 exhibits, and Jane Jones just won Best in Show. That gives someone the perception that Jane Jones might have had Tom Thumb's influence. They might have walked Jane's garden the night before, and Tom might have given some wonderful sage advice, not meaning to throw the show, but just some sage advice about exhibiting and how to pick and how to select. That calls impartiality into question, and you should not participate in any show where your prior knowledge would skew the results or even present the perception of skewed results. Lastly, on this slide, you should fill in in an emergency. Um, if 
for example, I like to exhibit and I'm also a senior exhibition judge. So if I show up to exhibit in a show and I brought a bunch of exhibits and they're already on the table and we are ready for judging to start and one of the judges has a flat tire on the way to the show and they're unable to come and judge. They might say, Nikki, we need you now to judge this show. We're down a judge and we need you in. You're in. Coach is putting me in. I have to go get all of my exhibits, pull them off the table, and mark them for display only. I cannot, in an emergency situation, judge a show in which I have exhibits. It's just not allowed. And it's just not good form for me to think that I could participate in the judging process of a show in which I have exhibits. Our last slide about ethics is going to cover perception. And if you don't take any other single word away from the ethics portion of this video, it should be perception. You should feel as though your eyes and your world are widened after the next few minutes of discussion. You should always consider the perception of everyone involved in the show process as a judge. AHS accredited judges should not judge in any show or any section or any class if prior knowledge exists that brings the integrity into question. Again, we discussed the seeing exhibits being brought in, seeing someone's garden the day before the show, uh, recognizing someone's handwriting, uh, seeing someone's information inside the show tag that might not have been tucked in correctly, overhearing conversation of show volunteers or show workers about particular exhibits and whose they might have been. If a judge's action or decision in any way, in any way, any words that you say, and this is, this is the point I want you to key in on, if anything you do leaves exhibitors or visitors with the perception of undue influence, it should be reconsidered. Any action or decision. I'm just asking that you take an extra beat of time to make sure that every action that you're carrying out at a show enhances the reputation of AHS. You are an ambassador of AHS at that show location. And if your actions make others question the integrity of the show process, question your accreditation as a judge, you should reconsider those actions. Just take an extra beat to think about what you're saying or think about what you're doing. Judges should strive for as much transparency as possible when judging shows. So judges who are hybridizers should think about that sensitively. Judges who are collectors and exhibitors themselves should think about that sensitively. There should be an extra beat of time for you to consider whether all of your actions and all of your statements are enhancing the reputation of AHS. Judging your local club show is also another one of those sensitive points. You should judge your local club show only in emergency and only if possible with prior approval from the AHS exhibitions chair. We know that shows and judges are in high demand. There is a small amount of judges who are willing to travel and handle these extra, this extra workload of judging so many shows in a year. Your local club show should only be judged by you in an emergency if budget or resources constrain the club from getting uninterested parties to come and judge the show you can fill in in an emergency. And this is on the perception slide, just so that you can be sensitive to the thought that some exhibitors in your local club may not like you. They may not like your evaluation process. It's a personal thing for them because you're so close to them.
Those personal feelings could cause the perception of undue influence or impartiality. So just be sensitive to that fact that you should judge your local club show only in an emergency and, if possible, get prior approval from AHS before you're judging your local show. To wrap up the point about perception, education and integrity are paramount for shows. This isn't about your personal preference about daylilies. It isn't about you wielding the mighty sword of being an exhibition judge. This is about educating exhibitors, educating the public who have come to visit the show, and maintaining the integrity of the show process. Just take that extra beat of time. So in summary for this video today, we reviewed the responsibilities and requirements for exhibition judges. I reviewed the fact that it was important to maintain a certain level of membership, a continuing level of membership. It's important to continue your education. Be prepared. And I mentioned the best in show ballot, the Ophelia Taylor ballot, the achievement medal process, the figure nine in your new handbook for evaluating distinction in daylilies. There's a new figure that helps judges with a little bit of a benchmark and a little bit of guidelines about judging seedlings. Review that. Be prepared. Be prepared to promote daylilies and enhance the image of the AHS at all times. We spent a bulk of the video today talking about ethics, and I reinforce the points that show up on our show evaluations and that come in as emails and handwritten letters and phone calls every year after show season. I tried to highlight the points that are of hottest topic in today's environment, and hopefully, uh, if you need to go back and review that quick session, just so that you can you see what's expected of you. Sometimes we make mistakes because we didn't understand that it was a mistake to start with. And those points that we covered in ethics in this video, we can say that we have covered those and you can say that you have heard it before. So hopefully moving forward in the future, we won't have issues in shows relating to those specific ethical dilemmas. I can't thank you enough for your time and attention today in part one of this three-part video series. Next up, you see we'll be covering judging standards, organization, rules, and accreditation. I hope that you'll watch the other two videos in the series, and I hope that you've enjoyed part one. Thank you for your interest in becoming an exhibition judge, and good luck. I'll see you in the garden.